Hello, I'm Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today, I wanna to talk about clinic policies. Clinic policies are usually not that fun of a topic, but it's definitely necessary. And policies are going to be ideally created for patients, and then you're gonna have your staff HR type policies. I like to keep everything separate because I like to be able to identify and help everybody else identify and differentiate between all of them. I usually keep like my HR handbook, employee handbook as policies, right? And then I have my standard operating procedure policies which are going to go hand in hand with the procedures video I will do as well, talking about that. And then I'm going to have my patient policies. And the patient policies are usually in your HIPAA documents, you have them sign your financial document policy that you have them sign, and depending on your specialty, any other type of situation. But you should have policies set in place for patients so that your staff knows what you expect of patients. As a patient, they are responsible, responsible for certain behaviors and certain um, accountability. And so having that available is helpful as well. If you are not good at writing policies, if you're not comfortable writing policies, I do recommend maybe for the first time asking a professional to help you. I don't want to say that I'm a professional in writing policies. I can definitely know what topics I've written policies on. I've written policies myself, but you might want to find someone, what I'm talking about professionally, in the realm of healthcare law to make sure that you're not overstepping your bounds depending on what state you're in, you're honoring what's expected, and maybe putting that money up front to ask someone to look over what you put together or assist you to put something together would be ideal if you're not comfortable or you don't know how. These are things that are going to be changing. I suggest reviewing policies every year because life changes. We know healthcare changes. Expectations change. You kind of live and learn, right? And sometimes you will be like, ooh, I really rely on these policies because I need to. And then there's other ones you might be like, oh, that's kind of unnecessary or I don't know why I put it in there or it's not applicable anymore. And you take it out. The HR policies especially, you need to make sure you're following federal and state guidelines when it comes to sick leave and PTO and hiring policies and how you handle certain situations. It's not so cut and dry, so you might want to have an HR trained specialist look at that as well or a employment lawyer look at that because you don't want to be putting yourselves in any situations that are going to put you at a high liability of having future issues with disgruntled employees. What I love about procedures is that it supports your decisions that you make. So if something comes up and you have to make a difficult decision or you have to make a decision about something in general, you should hopefully have something in those policies that supports why you made the decision you made. It should make it very easy. And if you are transparent about it and everyone has seen the policies, they've signed and acknowledged that they've read and understand the policies, then that is pretty cut and dry in my opinion. If people set themselves up for a situation where you have to go to a policy to do some kind of action, they were aware ahead of time of what was going to be done. And that's what I like about them. It's very transparent, it's very straightforward, and there's not a lot to argue with it when it's there. It's just making sure that your policies are within legal parameters, basically. To make it even easier, separate than the employee handbook, you could have policies set on your different departments or the different roles in your 
clinic. So you could have like your front desk policies, your patient registration policies, your mid office policies, your vaccine policies, your inventory ordering policies, your medical assisting nursing policies, your x-ray policies, like breaking it down into sections to make it very easy to find, very easy to understand. And now with computers, it makes it so easy to update. You want to make sure that if you do make updates, you keep copies of your old policies. You do want to keep those on hand. So you don't just want to erase or uh, change and not have any kind of back copies of old stuff because you need that. But it's definitely so much easier than a typewriter or handwriting stuff. It does take a while to get them originally and initially created, but after that, maintaining them are usually pretty easy, especially if the person in the practice who created them or is aware of them or part of assisting with creating them is still in the practice, then you can assign it to a few different people and say, oh, hey, we need to remember to update that, or you can update it right away, make yourself a note to do it at a certain point. It's just making sure that those stay updated. And then the patient policies, I mean, those are usually yearly. They usually don't change too much, but it is good because there are situations that do come up with patients. Unfortunately, nobody's perfect. We're all humans. We all have interactions with one another. And sometimes you need something to help you resolve a conflict or some kind of dispute. And so a policy is very important and putting those available in the clinic for patients to review other than the HIPAA, which is required and a financial policy is very important in my opinion to provide, but maybe about attendance, about um, maybe you ask people not to wear scented perfumes or lotions when they're in your office, depending on your specialty, um, maybe, visitors uh, you know coming in or, or coming with them to appointments I mean there could be policies for multiple different patient related reasons depending on your specialty the size of your practice the um, t size of your building I, I mean it could go there's so many different things but you can't just have policies and just tell people oh you can't do that because we have a policy on it like you need to make it known and accessible to them so if they want to read it if they want to know about it, especially patients, it's available. And then of course your staff, you should always have some kind of signed acknowledgement that they read and understand whatever policies there are. But it's just good practice to have some really solid, thorough policies on hand to make sure that you're not playing favorites with people. I mean, we're all human, you might not even do it intentionally, but the policies keep people just in line and everybody has the same expectations everybody works the same way towards the same goals again i really recommend if you're not comfortable writing policies if you are not familiar with writing policies you don't have the time find somebody who is an expert in this preferably in healthcare law in employment law that can help you or even review stuff you've put together to make sure that you're not maybe pigeonholing yourself too much but that you are also covering everything that you need to legally to protect yourself if you have any questions or comments about clinic policies please leave that in the comments below smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and please share with your colleagues Thank you so much. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.